Hi, and welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor video. Today, I wanna to talk to you about pixel peeping. What is it and why it might be holding you back from doing better photography? Let's talk. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what is pixel peeping. You may or may not have heard that term before. Basically, what pixel peeping means is that you're looking at your image at the pixel level. So whether that's zooming in on your LCD screen on your camera or zooming in when you're editing your photo on the computer later. So that could be in Lightroom, Photoshop, Luminar, um, any software that you're using to process your photos. When you zoom it in to the one-to-one -one view or 100% view, that is considered pixel peeping, especially if you go beyond that and you're zooming into like 200%. Okay, now you're looking at the actual pixels that make up the image. Okay, so why is that a bad thing? This is maybe a slightly contentious or controversial issue as some people will tell you the opposite of what I'm going to say um, and tell you to zoom in and look at your images up close like that. I'm gonna give you three uh, reasons and examples with some images as to why you want to avoid getting into the danger of pixel peeping and looking at your image so closely that you actually forget to look at other stuff besides the pixels. So I have a few examples for you. Let's go into my library here. Okay, so this first one, this was our cat, Yoda, and he was with us for a year. We took him on as an older cat. Uh, but as you can see, this image was shot at 6400 ISO and it's quite grainy. You can hopefully see the noise on the, on the screen, but is it a valid picture? Yes, absolutely. Do I value and treasure this picture? Yes, totally. Because this was the last photos that we had of him. Right after this was taken, we had to put him down because if you couldn't look, his eyes are actually, um, his pupils are different size. So apparently that means something in cat health. So what I did was I removed some of the noise so the software that you're using to edit, whether it be Lightroom or Photoshop or something else, has pretty good noise reduction software. There's also a lot of plugins on the market. So if it's noise you're concerned about from a high ISO, that kind of thing, don't worry about that so much. Get the shot, get the picture sharp. I would rather have a sharp grainy image than a blurry one with no grain. That makes sense, okay? So let's take a look at the whole picture, okay? So number one, uh, I mentioned you're not looking at the whole picture and you're not seeing the whole scope. So I had zoomed in on that one on purpose to show you the grain. This is the whole image, right? When we look at it like this as the whole image full screen, you don't even see the grain. And it's very unlikely that I'm going to make a large wall print of this image or show it really large somewhere. And also you have to consider viewing distance. I used to do fine art photography and I would make large canvas prints and hang them on the walls and sell those at, at art shows as people of people to hang on their wall as art. And you have to consider viewing distance because some of those images were a little grainy. I was using back back then a Canon 10D, which is only I think a six megapixel camera. And by today's standards, it's actually not that great. But I was making 40 inch prints, but I'm not looking at them from six inches away, which is kind of what you're doing when you're pixel peeping on your computer. So if I was to make that large canvas from that old digital camera that doesn't have the greatest resolution and stand with it this far from my face, of course I'm going to see all the grains and the pixels and everything else. But a viewing distance for an image of that size is a, a few feet. So when you stand back in the room and you look at that and it's printed on canvas, so the canvas actually is very forgiving in terms of texture and grain, you don't even see it. It becomes part of the art piece. Okay, so consider viewing distance and consider what you're going to do with the, with the images, okay? So point number one, look at the bigger picture. What are you going to be doing with that image? Are you going to be printing it large? If so, you still don't have to worry about the grain and pixels as I mentioned, because you're gonna be standing back from it as are your viewers. So let's take a look at another example of where you might be missing the bigger picture um, for, the, for the pixels. Can't see the picture for the pixels, shall we say. So here's an image I took in Cuba and I purposely took a really low camera angle and it was shot at ISO 6400 again. And 
I did that uh, because it's very dark. Obviously it's, not, obviously, it's nighttime. But this is not what the original looked like. It actually didn't have this much noise and grain. I actually added grain. So I converted it to black and white. This is what the original looked like. So you can actually see that there is not a lot of noise. We can zoom in and there is noise, right? But it looks a lot smoother than the black and white version that I created. So I added the noise on purpose because I wanted it to feel like it was sort of, you know, an old world, an old time picture, right? So by considering where you're going to use your image, how are you going to view it, the overall composition as well, and the feeling and mood, get away from thinking pixels, right? So here I've gone with the grain and added to it to create a mood, right? Um, let's see, composition. Okay, so something else that you want to consider in terms of when you're looking at your image so close up, you're actually not thinking about the whole frame. So if you zoom in on your camera or on the computer and you're looking at only just a portion, right? Let's take a look at um, this one, for example. Okay, so if I just zoom in here and we look at this, okay, so here's the original. It's quite grainy, 6400 again. Uh, let's see, yeah, 6400 again. Um, and this was shot with a wide lens, literally walking across the street um, as I as I went. So I can't use a tripod. It's in the middle of Tokyo in the in the famous Shibuya crossing where it's six intersections. It's craziness. I'll share a video with you if I can find one from my phone. Um, and I wanted to capture the sense of how many people are actually in that intersection at one time by crossing and shooting as I crossed. So I wasn't using a tripod. I had the aperture wide as I could go and 6400 ISO. So there's nowhere to go with the exposure, right? I wanted to make sure I had a fast enough shutter speed, one two hundredth of a second here, so that I could freeze the people and I was also moving as well. So I didn't want to get motion in the image, okay? So this is, this is how grainy it looks, okay? And this is the unprocessed version. Let's take a look at what I did with it, okay? So here's the processed version, pulled out tons of detail in the, in the shadows and in the highlights, and when we do a little bit of noise reduction, yes, you still see the grain. But again, when you're looking at the bigger picture and looking at the entire composition, looking for the message that you want to send with your, your image or the, what you want to convey, does this convey a sense of how chaotic this intersection actually is? I think it does a pretty good job. Does the grain or the noise take away from that when you're looking at the entire picture? Again, I, th I don't think so but feel free to tell me what you think in the comments below. Let's take a look at another example and another point. Okay. Let's look at this one here. Okay, so here's a waterfall in Oregon that I shot a few years ago. So the exposure on this one is ISO 200 F16 at eight seconds. Okay, so that's your typical waterfall exposure. Um, people, you know, like to have the silky water, but I wanted to experiment. I wanted to see what happened if I go to the other end of the extreme and do something with a fast shutter speed and freeze the water. Well, it was kind of dusk, so it was getting dark out and getting a little bit dim light. So I changed the exposure to F4 at a hundredth of a second. So I opened my aperture wide up. And I managed to get a hundredth of a second, but to do so, I had to shoot it at 12,800 ISO. So that's pretty high. When we zoom in, Right, you can see that there's there's significant amount of grain and noise, and I've used some noise reduction on here compared to the one with 200 ISO. There's a lot more detail, of course, in the 200 ISO one, but look at the water. I mean, it's very different here. Right, so the overall effect and feel of the exposure and in, in this picture is different than the other one. And yes, of course, I would have preferred to use a, a lower ISO. But the time of day that I was there did not allow me to do so. Okay? In order to get that faster shutter speed, I had to crank the ISO. If I wanted to do um, that with a lower ISO, I'd have to come back at another time where there was more daylight. Okay? But then I run into the challenge of, of having the long exposures. So I was experimenting and I tried a 12,800. And to me, this actually works with this image as well. So in the first one, I'll just go back here. The rocks and the trees are sharp and the water is sort of soft and blurry, right? When I go to the one at the high ISO, you kind of lose a lot of detail. Well, you do lose a lot of detail in, especially the shadow areas in a high ISO image, right? But now what it's done is it's put more focus on the water being sharp and the, the rest of the dark areas and the shadows are a bit kind of 
soft or sort of not as detailed as the first one. And I kind of like it, actually. It has a different, um, very subtle, but very different mood to it in terms of the feeling of the final image. Okay, So don't be afraid to experiment. Try high SO. If your camera goes to 6400 or 12,000 or, or higher, play around with it. Don't be afraid of it. And the pixel peeping thing will only keep you from experimenting. So that's kind of where uh, I'm going with the idea of it's limiting your photography. Because if you're stuck on, okay, I have to shoot under 800 ISO because I'll get noise and grain, you're going to miss out on trying things like that, trying experiments with a faster shutter speed in a waterfall in the dim light. Or let's take a look at another example that you might have missed out on. Here's a fellow that I photographed in India. Uh, again, 6400 ISO. I was using a tripod here. Um, it's a 125th of a second. If I go much slower on the shutter speed, he's a person, he's moving, um, I'm going to get too much blur on him. So even though I was using a tripod, I still needed ISO 6400. And that's the biggest aperture I have on, on that lens that I was using. Right? I converted it to black and white. Let's look at the zoomed in version. Okay, so if we pixel peep it, Sure, absolutely. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of grain uh, and you can see it clearly, right? But if I convert it to black and white, do a little bit of noise reduction, this is what the final image looks like. And I quite like it. And I would have missed out on this opportunity. So we had gone to this old ruins. You can see the rocks in behind him to photograph these, this ruins of this old town. And we happened upon this, this man who was a, a sheep or a goat herder and he agreed to pose for us. So this is our group actually photographing him and our guide, Jas, is holding up a cell phone, lighting him. So that's the light that's on his face. That's how dim and how dark it actually is at the time. But if I had not um, gone with the high SO, I would not have gotten this picture sharp. Okay, So if I'd have gone with, say, um, even 1600 ISO, the shutter speed then has to be equally slower. So 1600 ISO is two stops less light coming in with the ISO, two stops. So then I need two stops more light coming in with the, with the uh, shutter speed. So it's going to go from a 25th of a second to a 12th to about a sixth. So a sixth of a second is getting really kind of sketchy in terms of photographing people because of the movement, right? So I chose to go with the high ISO, embrace the grain. Don't worry about the pixels or the noise and make sure that I got him sharp because he wasn't moving, right? I knew I wasn't moving and the camera wasn't moving because I was using a tripod, but he was, right? So let's see what else. Uh, another couple examples from uh, some images that I took in Japan. Okay, so 6400, this one is super noisy as well. You can see it up in the sky particularly, right? But a little bit of noise reduction, a little bit of processing, and it's pretty good. So yes, you could still see the noise, but I wasn't using a tripod that particular night. Uh, we went to a festival and I just wanted to capture the essence of the lights and, and the pagodas and the Japanese lanterns, right? And again, I'm not going to present it really large and print it on a huge canvas. I'll probably share it on social media, that type of thing. So for that, it's really good enough, right? Okay, now this little cutie was, um, this was a bucket list item of mine. I went to see the monkeys in Nagano where they go in the, in the hot springs. And this monkey um, decided to walk up the stairs towards the building where you're entering. And they're Japanese macaques. They live only in Japan and only in this area and they're protected. And she literally sat a couple of feet in front of me on the stairs. And I had seconds to get the shot. And I ended up with um, 6400 ISO at a 500 of a second. I'd been shooting at a faster shutter speed because the other monkeys had been moving around a lot and I wanted to make sure that I, I wasn't getting them blurry. We're underneath this overhang of the building so it's a bit dimmer and my uh, my camera was set to auto ISO. Um, I'll include a link below in the article to uh, where you can learn about auto ISO and why you want to embrace that as well as your pixel peeping is um, the camera needed more light, so it went to 6400 ISO for me. Even still, the image is a little bit underexposed, but I was able to pull it out easily in processing, and I absolutely love this image of this um, portrait of this monkey. I think she's super sweet. And even if I zoom in, yes, I can still see some, some noise, and yes, it could probably have more detail if I had used a lower ISO, but I would rather have this shot 
than not have it at all, right? So consider what are you missing out or potentially missing out by pixel peeping, by looking at things too overly close. Are you missing a composition? Are you not looking at the composition? Are you missing the shot altogether because of worry about high ISO or what the pixels are doing? Okay, so try and get over that um, fear of noise and looking at your images so close that you lose track of the, of the forest for the trees, right? Or as I said earlier, maybe we'll make a new phrase, lose track of the picture for the pixels, right? So look at the picture, look at the overall scene, make your composition, make sure that you are, are getting the image with the mood and the feeling that you want, and don't worry so much about pixels, for heaven's sakes. And if somebody else says something about your image is grainy or uh, critiques it in some way, the bottom line is if you are happy with it, then that's all that matters. So I think that you want to shoot for you and make sure that you take images that you are happy with at the end of the day. And I am happy with this image of this little monkey because she's so cute, right? So I'll leave you with that. And let's have a discussion about, are you guilty of pixel peeping? Did you, are you familiar with that term or have, have you just heard it for the first time? So let's talk about, is pixel peeping ruining your images? Until next time, keep shooting and practicing and above all else, enjoy doing photography as much as I do. Take care.